Can you talk a little bit about your force to the trees approach, how you go from market analysis, group analysis, all the way back to selecting the highest potential stocks that you want to buy on those breakouts? Obviously, here we go. First, again, we're playing a probability game. Anybody who tells you, oh, I know the market is going to do this, or I know this stock is a definite winner, is a liar. Only mm -hmm. the liars are always right. In fact, I wrote my book, which most other people don't do. They only tell you about the good stuff. I put a chapter in the book where I spoke about losing positions. And I remember writing that, even though it was like 40 years ago, I remember writing the words that how you handle a losing position will make you a winner in the market. So right. it's very it's very important that you, you blow out. If something doesn't work, I honestly think if we really do our good work, we can be right 75, 80% of the time, but only the liars are right 100%. And when you're wrong, hey, it's like a, you get another taxi coming along, you get out of that one, you pick up a good taxi. It's the same thing in the right. market. Now, to go to your question, the forest of the trees approach, the trees approach one, it, again, we're dealing in the ideal world. You want to have the market behind you. So you start with, are you in a good, healthy market? Mm -hmm. Which until a few months ago, it was terrific. Now I've downgraded it in the last two, three months from a rip-roaring bull market to now only moderately favorable. It's basically an even Stephen market, which we should talk about in a moment. There's good and there's bad stuff here. But anyway, you want the market behind you. Then you go down to, oh, what are the best groups? Like right now, for argument's sake, you know, this is a very split tape, but there are some groups I like, like we've been having clients in the last several weeks buying stocks like in the building products area, mm -hmm. coal stocks, aluminum, in the more conservative area. I've had them buy a lot of REITs, which have been great, a lot of utilities. And for more aggressive players, even though short term they're extended, I like some of the crypto stocks, the cryptocurrency mm -hmm. stocks. At the same time, there are a lot of bad groups we want to stay away from, even though they're rallying short term. I don't like the airlines, um, cruise lines, restaurants, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, so you want a good group. So you mm -hmm. go from the market is in your favor to the groups that are the best. Then within those groups, Richard, you look for the best dawn looking stocks, best risk reward um, characteristics within those groups. And hey, um, you, it, it's a filtering process. And if you do that, like I told you, you're never going to be 100% right. But first of all, this is an interesting thing that most people don't realize. I've seen over the years, clients who play the game right can be right less than 50% of the time. Focus mm -hmm. on that. Less than 50% of the time. And you can make tremendous amount of money if you let your winners run and you quickly get rid of the losers. And I think we can do a heck of a lot better than that. I think that, as I said before, we should be able to bat at least 75%. And again, you've got to be realistic. Most people don't realize, hey, you're playing a game of probabilities. Don't forget the last person to hit 400 many a year ago was Ted Williams when he hit, I think it was 406. Hey, that still meant he made out six times out of 10. Right, right. Perfect. And um, how should investors size their positions? Does it depend of d d does it depend on the quality of the breakout? And kind of what are your thoughts on concentration versus diversification? You're asking so many good questions. There's no one magic answer, Richard. Mm -hmm. You know, I always when I used to be on the seminar circuit, which I no longer do, I, I used to say you buy and sell to the sleeping level. Some people you know, will go very aggressively and they just want to hold a few positions. There are other people that take a look at, oh my God, you're turning your account into a mutual fund and they want to have a hundred. I don't think there's a magic answer. I would just say that for me, I think that it's a mistake, even though some people swing for the fences to just have three or four positions, because if you turn out to be wrong, even though you win, when you're right, you win big, you get hurt significantly. Conversely, you can over diversify. So I would say, you know, it's something like 15 or 20 positions that are all good positions, maybe four or five percent for each position. And then if one or two don't go your way, you're not going to be blown out of the water. I think makes sense. I'm a little more conservative that way. But again, each person has to decide what their risk level is and how averse they ought to risk. 